And if you had 20 guesses to figure out who was the hero for Edmonton, I'm sure every one of them would be wrong. It was not Gretzky, it was not Curry, although there were heroes early. Gretzky to Curry, playing with the cast on the hand, 1-0 Oilers. But later in the first period, Craig Redman with a cannonading blast past Grant Fuhrer, it's 1-1. Second period, Paul Coffey, great rush, end-to-end -end slides it past Bob Janisak, who played very well, 2-1 Oilers, end of two. But in the third, Jim Fox digs it out to Bernie Nichols, and we are tied going to overtime. And here it is, Lee Fogelin, four goals all year, Scores at an unbelievable angle, and Edmonton went on to defeat Los Angeles last night by a score of 3-2. to two. Meanwhile, in Winnipeg, the Jets beat the Calgary Flames 5-4 to four in overtime. Brian Mullen had a goal almost eight minutes into overtime to give the homestanding Jets the win. They had trailed 4-1 to one late in the second period, but made a nice comeback. At the end of regulation play in that game, both teams engaged in a bench-clearing melee that resulted in five penalties being called. It also resulted in NHL President John Ziegler's handing down $5,000 in fines against each team, both Winnipeg and Calgary. When it comes to Stanley Cup playoffs, the last thing in the world you can trust is a regular season statistic. Norris Division foes St. Louis and Minnesota met eight times during the regular season. The Blues won six, lost one, and tied the eighth game. St. Louis also won all four games played on its home ice. Well, you know what happened. The North Stars got physical while the Blues were wondering why only 10,800 fans showed up. And Minnesota skated away with a 3-2 win in their series opener. North Stars never really trailed in this game. Neil Broughton will fire the, his own rebound past Rick Wamsley. The Stars won a 3-2. Gil Malash topped 39 shots in goal. Meanwhile, in Chicago, first period, the Blackhawks came out flying. Nice pass there. Daryl Sutter to Ken Yaramchuk. He beats Glenn, uh, Greg Steffen, and the Hawks led 4-1 after one. Wing problems in their own zone as the Hawks scored four more in the second period. Where is the defense as Steve Larmer finds Jack O'Callaghan in the slot? And there's the goal. The Hawks win it 9-5, to five, a team playoff record. Nine goals for the Chicago Blackhawks as they win the opener of their Norris Division semifinal. Meanwhile, in the Adams Division, the roles were reversed. And so did the game one results in the Montreal-Boston series. A year ago, the Bruins won the Adams division in the regular season play, but were ousted in three straight by the Canadians, who finished fourth. This year, Les Habitants won the regular season championship, but game one went to the Bruins. By a 5-3 count, you figure it out. In the forum in Montreal, Mats Noslin makes the steal from Ray Bork, goes in on Doug Keynes, but a stone right there. Keynes a strong game in net. Later in the period, Mike O'Connell stops it along the dasher, and he'll blast it past Steve Penny. 2-0 Bruins. Second period. The clean steal from Chelios by Kenny Lindsman. Around Steve Penny, the backhand scores. 3-0 Boston. But a 3-2 game. Serge Bobert to Bobby Smith in front. And we are tied at 3. But just 90 seconds later in that third period, Lindsman, the rat, again, coming down with Keith Crowder. Pretty 2-on-1. The Bruins go on to defeat the Canadians 5-3. Meanwhile, in Quebec, the Nordiques got a blast from Mario Marois, tipped in by Michel Goulet en route to their 5-2 win over Buffalo. It's 2-1 Quebec here. Later in the second period, Peter to Anton Stastny, 3-1 Quebec. Two third period goals by Wilf Paymont wrapped it up. Here's the first one as Brad Maxwell cuts it off at the point. Paymont deflects it in. Final Quebec 5, Buffalo 2. In the Patrick division, just when the Philadelphia Flyers were beginning to think about the problems they've had in the playoffs the last few years, along came Mark Howe. The Flyers hadn't won a postseason contest since 1982 until they pulled out a 5-4 to four overtimer over the Rangers last night to take game one of their Patrick division semifinal. Flyers dominated the first 20 minutes of this game. Ron Sutter uses his teammate as decoy, then comes on and beats Glenn Hanlon with the quick wrister. It's 1-0 Philly. Flyers will break out again. Brian Prop, Dave Poland set up Brad McCrimmon for the Flyers' third goal. It was 3-0 Philly after one period of play. But the Rangers dominated the second period. Then 77 seconds into the third, Donnie Maloney pounces on the loose puck, beats Kelly Lindbergh to tie the game at three. Glenn Hanlon, big mistake here. Fans on the clearing pass. Philadelphia's Todd Bergen steals, feeds Tim Kerr. That's an open net goal, and that's a 4-3 Flyers advantage. But the Rangers pulled Hanlon, and then just 26 seconds remaining in the game, Anders Hedberg will beat Lindbergh to the short side, the 4-4 score, and they go to overtime. In the OT, Ron Sutter from behind the net to Mark Howe, who puts the wrist shot past a screen, Glenn Hamlin. Flyers won 5-4, Anders Hedberg says it's not over. It's only the first game. We, uh, <laughs> we're getting closer and closer. Uh, we have not no way we're going to throw in our towels. We'll see you tomorrow.
Meanwhile, at the Cap Center in Landover, Maryland, second period, Islanders with a 1-0 lead. Dennis Potvin knocks it out of the air, kicks it, and then backhands it past Riggin. Isles lead it 2-0. Then the Capitals with a two-man advantage. Where is Larry Murphy? He's over there on the point with the big slap shot that beats Billy Smith at long range, 2-1. Just 16 seconds later, don't take that man Murphy off the ice because he will come up with another shot from the point. Not there, right there. And he beats Billy Smith again. It's 2-2 two two in the second. Caps were up 3-2 when Mike Bossy will make the prettiest play in hockey. That is a deflection of a shot from the point. Number 22 just changes direction enough to get it past the goalie. 3-3 tie. 2.28 into the overtime after a scoreless third. Alan Haworth takes the feed from Rod Langway and beats Smith. The Caps a winner in OT by a score of 4-3. Well, Larry Holmes is definitely in the hunt for Rocky Marciano's mark. We will have that, baseball scores and highlights, and much more when the Sports Center continues. If you place May 20th at an unnamed site, Holmes should make between two and a half and three million dollars plus a signing bonus. And if he wins that fight, he will be 48-0, putting him, obviously, within two wins of Marciano's unblemished heavyweight mark. Larry in strong pursuit of Muhammad Ali's record for unretiring. Supporters of day baseball at Wrigley Field in Chicago thought they were out of the woods with a judge's decision last month that upheld the constitutionality of laws which prohibit night baseball in that ballpark. But at the behest of several factions, including Illinois Governor James Thompson, the Illinois Supreme Court has agreed to decide the legality of those laws. The case bypasses the state appellate court with that announcement, and the justices say they will begin hearing arguments on May the 31st. Well, there was no argument with the case set forth today by left-hander Steve Trout. Masterful is the only way to call it. Trout allowed the Pittsburgh Pirates just three hits. The only run the Bucks got was unearned, and the Cubs cruised to their second straight win of the young season. The score was 4-1. to one. Scoreless game will pick it up in the fourth inning. Leon Durham grounds to Bill Madlock. It doesn't come up for him. And on the error, Gary Matthews, who was on with a single, moves over to third base. The next hitter, Keith Moreland. And Jose De Leon will wild pitch Gary Matthews home from third. And the Cubs lead it 1-0. Moreland reached base on a bunt single, and then Ron Say will get one up nice and high and drive it nice and high into the bleachers in left field. His first home run of the year is a three-run shot, 4-0 Cubs. De Leon won seven games last year, four of them against the Cubs, but not today. Trout held the Pirates a one-run through nine. Tony Pena finishes the game on the comebacker there. Chicago a winner by a score of 4-1. Trout the winner and De Leon the loser. Trout struck out three and walked three, gave up just three hits. Three was the magic number as the Cubs won it by three. Does Keith Hernandez enjoy making life miserable for his ex-teammates or is it just our imagination? The New York Mets first baseman had some field days last year against the St. Louis Cardinals and so far he has gone three for five against the Cards in both 1985 games, helping the Mets to win a pair of extra inning games. Today's result in ten, the Mets two, the Cards one. The Mets score in the second. Jack, uh, rather the cards do. Jack Clark is on second. This ball's coming right in your living room past a diving Rafael. Say it again, Santana. Clark scores on the shot by Terry Pendleton. It is 1-0 St. Louis. But against John Private Tudor in the bottom of the fourth. Bases loaded for the Mets. Pojo, Howard Johnson grounds the ball to Pendleton. He makes two errors in the inning. Calvin Chapman will score, and we are tied at one. We go that way to the bottom of the 11th, I should have said. Keith Hernandez on first base, Neil Allen on the mound, and Gary Carter rips one. Off the glove of third baseman Art and How Hernandez will stop at third. Then they're going to eventually intentionally walk George Foster. And so, the former Met, Neil Allen, pitching. Skipper Whitey Herzog, not pleased in the dugout. Three and two pitch to Danny Uriah Heat. Ball four, game over. The Mets win it again over the St. Louis Cardinals by a score of 2-1. to one. The uh, young rookie reliever, Roger McDowell, with his first major league win. Andy Hassler with the lost Tudor pitch marvelously. He had went nine innings, gave up only three hits, but uh, he was not around for the decision. Elsewhere in the National League, Los Angeles uh, wins at Houston 4-3. to three. A three-run eighth, capped by a two-run, two-out homer by Mike Marshall. And uh, the Dodgers win the game behind Carlos Diaz. Bill Hello Dolly takes the loss in relief. Over in the American League, here we go again. Three up, three wins for the Tigers. This time in 10, they beat Cleveland 11-10 to on a bases-loaded walk in the 10th to Tom Brookins. Trammell and Gibson had homers in the game for the Tigers. Eleven pitchers saw action in this one. Uh, Julio Franco and Mel Hall drove in three runs apiece for Cleveland, but they lose again. And looky here, three up, 
Three wins for Boston over the Yankees. And George Steinbrenner seething in the background. Today it was the Red Sox 6-4 over the Yanks, despite a 4-4 and a home run performance for Winfield. Dwight Evans drove in three runs, two with a two-run homer, as Roger Clemens wins his first time out. The Philadelphia 76ers, um, one night up, one night down the next. That is no way to look ahead to the playoffs. We will have Pro Hoops and more when the Sports Center continues.